Hi, thanks for joining my channel again. Thank you for all those that have liked, subscribed and shared. Really appreciate that going forwards, thank you. This afternoon, I'm in another historic, iconic, beautiful area. Um, and this time I'm in the county of Devon, um, United Kingdom. And I'm actually in the uh, National Park of Dartmoor. And this historic and iconic site uh, was famous for the manufacture of gunpowder. Uh, so you can imagine it is very, very remote. It is very difficult to find. Um, it's such a beautiful site, fantastic weather this afternoon. Uh, so two tasks from, from me. One is to describe how I put my LOFO product together. And the second task is to try and get some um, nice images uh, and compositions of this site area. So this is LOFO, uh, my invention, manufactured by Move Shoot Move. Please check them out. I'll leave them uh, a, a link to their site in the description, Move Shoot Move. Uh, the idea behind LOFO is simply to provide a low level platform for your camera. And as you know, ultra low photographic perspective brings a whole new dimension to your portfolio. So let me show you how I connect my camera. The platform simply locks in position at 15 degrees and simply load camera, lock and double lock. And it's as simple as that. So now the camera is connected securely to the LOFO. Um, the HDMI cable to the field monitor, I simply wrap that round the stem twice. Taking my field monitor, um, screw the field monitor to the top, nice and securely, like so. I have a double ball joint for positioning of the monitor screen uh, for ease of viewing. I simply connect the HDMI cable like so and that's it it's as simple as that and I'm ready to go um, I use a remote of course so I drive my camera zoom in focus in and trigger release remotely um, the handle is telescopic and you can see it telescopes out to quite some distance which has super advantages up and above a tripod especially when uh, you want to reach over and get a different perspective, etc. So you can uh, put this down a slope, for example, or you can uh, position it such that um, you're getting a completely different perspective than uh, the norm. All right, what I'm going to do is extend the handle I'm going to zoom something like 24 millimeters, I think, this time. Yeah, 24 millimeters. And I'm going to try and get a position such that Yeah. Excellent. So I've got the, the handle extended and that gives me the advantage of um, positioning um, the composition differently. And I would like to get these granite blocks um, in the foreground with the chimney and this um, block arrangement going up to the chimney. Uh, with these fantastic trees. So, 24 millimeters f8, 80th of a second, ISO 64, and what I'm going to do is wait for the sun. Because we're approaching golden hour, the shadows are really harsh, so the, the light now is absolutely fantastic. The composition is such that I'm using like leading lines of this granite um, structure uh, going up to the chimney and the beautiful 
uh, fir trees are on the left hand side here. So my settings are f8, 80th of a second, ISO 64. Just double check the composition as I would like. I'm a fan of beautiful clouds above the chimney area. Just waiting for now the, um, the sun to come out behind the clouds. Focus and find a shutter. And here is the result. So that's essentially how I'm using Lofo and it's absolutely amazing what you can do with this and it's fun and it's enjoyable and you can search for that different perspective of image to enhance your portfolio. Um, so I'm just going to spend some time now going around this site trying to get some different images uh, that I'll share with you uh, very shortly. Some historical facts as I walk around and tour this site. Um, building work started here in 1844, um, thanks to Mr. George Freen, a wealthy alderman and industrial entrepreneur. Um, and he set up uh, the Plymouth and Dartmoor Gunpowder Company. I wonder why they installed that particular stone into the wall that maybe had some meaning at the time and this is all granite so building work finished and production started in 1846 so when we look at this that's some 178 years ago it is recorded that prince albert took personal interest in this site and he assisted and helped get the uh, approval and permission procedures through quickly in order to take water from the East Dart River, which is uh, running close to the site. Once permission had been granted to extract and divert a, a leet uh, of water to the site from the East Dart River, the inventions uh, were extremely environmentally friendly for their time. It included three water wheels, three wooden water wheels, and a sluice mechanism system that could take and divert the water to the cor correct buildings. Uh, and it was very resourceful uh, with very little waste. Um, the process of manufacturing or the process of capturing the black powder must have been something else so I'm going to do a bit of study on that because I'm quite interested in how they the, the industrious side of, of the, uh, the mill. The black powder um, was made from a mixture of potassium nitrate, sulfur and charcoal. Now interestingly the potassium nitrate was imported from India. Uh, so the logistics of transporting that compound all that distance in the 1800s is absolutely phenomenal. Sulfur was imported from southern Italy and came from the Vesuvius and Stromboli volcanic regions. The charcoal came from locally sourced burners uh, and included elder, willow, juniper, dogwood and silver birch. Uh, the ingredients were segregated in different buildings until such times that they were needed and they were brought to uh, one of the buildings where they were blended together in special barrels. The required quantities were weighed etc and the mixture was crushed and churned to, to form a crude black powder. 
Now, depending on how fine the powder needed to be, the whole process could take up to 24 hours. Once the powder had been blended uh, and incorporated, it would finish up looking something like a cake. Um, and, and this was termed or called the ripe charge. Now the ripe charge was mandrolically pressed uh, into one inch or 2.5 centimeter slabs of material. The slabs of ripe charge were then broken down using wooden mallets, um, which was very um, mandrolic and very time consuming. Uh, so they went ahead and invented water powered granulating machines. The grains would be then fed through a series of uh, graduated sieves. Um, again, this became mechanized and, and the gra grains then were tumbled in a gauze or a gauze covered cylinder uh, in order to collect all the dust particles. And the whole second process of uh, breaking down the slabs were termed coining. The coined grains uh, were then processed further um, and an addition of graphite and black lead were added in order to coat the grains uh, and this process or this part of the process was called or termed dusting and the whole idea behind the dusting of the grains was to coat the grains with a waterproof coating uh, thus making it possible to use the gunpowder or the black powder in damp mines or damp quarry areas. The last part of the process was to um, dry the coined grains and this was done um, in trays uh, in the open air but then uh, soon after they decided to um, have heated rooms um, using gloom stoves and um, at the end of the process steam. Uh, so the uh, fumes and potential sparks were drawn away uh, with a, in, in a flue um, from the furnace area and through to the chimney. Um, you've seen the chimney that I've just photographed. Once the powder had finished the process it was packed in large oak barrels and often the uh, oak barrels were clad or lined with leather. Because of the number of barrels, um, it is reported that 20% of the workforce um, were coopers or barrel makers, which is fascinating. In its heyday, 100 workers were employed on this site. The barrels of black powder were taken by horse and cart to various storage magazines around the region including the uh, towns of Newton Abbott, Exeter and Plymouth. Now all factories need some um, quality control so what they did back then they regularly checked the condition of the black powder uh, by firing a proving mortar so a 68 pound or approximately 30 kilogram shot was fired and the distance uh, this projection landed uh, was measured and this calibration system could determine the strength of the powder. It is also recorded that the workers in the volatile areas could only sit on one legged stools and this was to um, ensure that their attentions were with the process 100% uh, so should they nod off whilst they're working then they would fall off their, their stool. Following the invention of dynamite in 1867 and the development of gelignite and cordite then the black powder requirement drastically fell. And this coincided with the um, decline in the tin and copper mining industries in Devon and Cornwall. And sadly, it eventually led to the closure of the powder mills in 1897. 
that means that it operated for some 50 or well, 51 years which is a phenomenal achievement. The 18 buildings on this site include a number of magazines. Now a magazine is a storage building, there were machinery housing buildings, there were glazing, coining and pressing houses, there was a cartridge press house, um, a office of course and a welfare facility for the workers. As with all manufacturing and factory sites, to go uh, a span of 50 years without incident is not possible. Um, so the recordable incidents, there were three incidents of, uh, that were recorded. One was a fire and the other two were very close explosions. So one was in the November of 1857 that uh, severely injured two men. And then sadly, in the December of 1857, so the next month, um, a further explosion uh, was recorded and this um, tragically uh, took the lives of two men and injured a number of others. So all in all, for this site to operate for some 50 years um, is absolutely outstanding. And I think going forwards um, I'll be doing more vlogging work on historical factories and manufacturing facilities. It's, uh, it's, it's very fascinating, the, the historical side and um, its craftsmanship and workmanship and inventions that uh, has taken us to where we are today with technologies. The, past history of these factories and manufacturing facilities is becoming lost and um, I think all credit to the technologies of that time in the 1800s um, they've certainly strived to invent and manufacture new processes which I find absolutely fascinating so Back to the photography, I hope you've enjoyed the historical uh, tour. So when one studies this site, um, you can understand its remoteness um, because of the safety issues, manufacturing gunpowder or black powder, as it was called. Uh, so they use the, the black powder um, to blast out the load and the load bearing rocks. And also on Dartmoor, there are a number of quarries uh, granite quarries and the granite was used to build properties and buildings etc. So the, the granite boulders quarried locally um, were actually shaped and carved if you like into manageable blocks to, to build properties uh, and factories. I've um, toured the site using LOFO, I've taken some ultra low images I'm hoping uh, some turn out nice. Uh, I've used a polarizer so the sky is going to be really blue, dark, um, but maybe I can adjust that in post. I'm wearing also a Mikey and um, should you want to buy one of these just drop me a message and I'll get one posted out to you. Uh, they're absolutely invaluable for tightening up sort of you know quick release plates, things come loose after a while anything to do with uh, uh, um, adapter screws, uh, this is the tool for the job. Um, so for example, uh, the adapter screw on a pocket two on a small tripod, instead of using a coin which damages the slot, um, get yourself a Mikey, uh, they're, they're fantastic. They're made from um, high grade, marine grade stainless steel, uh, so they won't rust and they'll last a lifetime. All right, I'm going to find the car um, and wander back. It's a, it's a good hour's drive from where I live and the roads are extremely tight, really almost just like farmer's tracks. Um, so I don't want to be doing that in the dark. So I'm gonna wander back and uh, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. 
don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And until next time, bye for now.